Hello everybody and welcome to the second C tutorial which I'm actually producing at the same time as the first. So what you may have noticed now is that the the focus has gone inside of the window because it is not necessary for you to see outside of that because it's just not needed. It's not because I'm trying to hide anything, it's because it's just it's just better for you because you don't have to like say oh look at his background, oh look at these icons, you know. So let's get started. So I've already made a, if I had clicked on it, I've already made a directory called variables. I suggest you do the same via the make deer that we discussed earlier. So let's get started. So we're going to move into our variables. Variable, our variable, you know what I mean. I can't believe it, it bloody words things. Um, our directory. So then we're going to nano, we're going to make us a new C file, a main.c file. And so here we are, we're going to do exactly what we did last time, except for putting in our hello world statement. Now that comes later, because what we're going to do here is a lot more complex in its own way. So, as you can probably judge from the title, what we're going to be doing today is variables, and we're also going to be discussing displaying them, and addition, subtraction, and all that good stuff. So. Let's put it, put return zero back in before I forget. So there are three main types of variables in C. Although that could sort of be divided into two, but forget that I've said that. You've got integers. You've got characters. And last of all, you have floating point numbers. Perhaps not float, because I want to be able to write stuff. I want to be able to explain pi and house number. So, first of all, we have our integer. Ignore the uh, below two, I'll get to those in a second. So what an integer is, is it's essentially a number. It's a whole number. It is not the number with a floating point. It's not a decimal, if that's what you want to know. It is a number that is whole. And that is all there is to it. Although it does get a bit more complex than that based on how big of a number you can store in them so for example on most systems if you were to use this here which declares just a regular number a regular integer if you were to use that on most systems you would get a 32-bit one now what does that mean you may ask now what that means is that there's a limit to how much of a number you can store now don't forget that the the computer works on zeros and ones, right? And there's only so many combinations you can have in them. So that 32-bit number I mean is there are 32 zero and one switches there can be. Now what might amaze you if you've never heard this before, which I su I'd be surprised if you hadn't, I think that's the washing machine just came on, is that you can assemble almost 4.2, just over 4.2 billion different numbers with that. Now it does get a bit more complex, but I'll get onto that later. I in this tutorial, of course. So you can assemble any number up to 4.2 billion with a regular integer. But wait, don't maybe I want to use a number smaller than that. So you do this. This, on the other hand, has 16, which means the highest number it can get to is 65,536. But wait, I need a larger number. Now, on 32-bit systems it will be the same as a regular integer I believe under most compilers, but under people running a 64-bit, I understand that it can go up to, it can have 64 bits, 64 bits that you can use, pins sort of things, so you can have 64 different binary num sort of binary digits, so you can get obviously 2 to the 64 as the highest number you can get. Now, I don't know that number. I know it's pretty damn big. <laughs> so anyway, moving on to the character thing. Now, what a character is, is like an integer. So it's made up of pins, and these pins make up various combinations, but instead of having 32, it has 8, which means the largest number it can have is 256. But there's a twist with these characters, because it's called a char. Not because it's all a char, 
well I suppose it could be because it's called a char so because it's called a char whenever you output it it recognizes it as one of these characters that you'd see so what it does is it stores the ASCII code if you don't know what that is go and search it up on Google and there's a massive ASCII table showing you all of the different numbers that correspond to all of the different characters that you can see on screen so what this does this precise one there's libraries for making it bigger and all of that but what this does is it creates a variable that can be interpreted by the machine as one of these characters that it can output now finally we have our double or a float which is a small version of it so how it essentially work how it works is that it uses these pins of varying combinations to get certain numbers so for example a floating point I believe is 32 bits so you can get up to about a billion but you can but as a trade-off rather than not going able to get to 4 billion and all that what you can do is you can have up to 8 decimal places and but with the double you use more space but you can have up to 16 so you might be wondering it's all well and good having these numbers but what are we supposed to do with them so what you can do is you can assign values to them so let's say this is 123 now I don't I'm not going to confuse you with just assigning numbers so I'm just going to assign a character here let's make it that and finally we have our double and this is the part that I've been waiting for writing down pi I hope I remember it correctly wait nope ah that was a brilliant start wasn't it I get it wrong <laughs> 141 2653587932388 I believe if I recall correctly so that is how you make our varying num our various numbers equal things but the thing is you don't have just one of these you can have as many as you like within reason because the obviously the computer has limited memory and such so you can have practically billions of these and they and they're all made separately by these things here so you can notice I called this long derp and this char badana and this double pi now what that means is that they're called they're called identifiers which means they they program knows exactly where in memory it can find these based on these identifiers so it can access the memory space containing these variables by this name so uh, now we've done that you want to see why things aren't so straightforward as just going up to 4.2 billion now there are two varying states that these things can have there is signed and there's unsigned unsigned means that you can't go below zero but you can go up to 4.2 billion as I mentioned and obviously the relative ones 256 there whatever that one is and but that what it does stops you doing is it stops you going through negative numbers but the default value for these is signed which means it essentially halves the value that you can attain so instead of being 4.2 billion it's 2.1 billion but instead it goes down to 2.1 billion as a negative so you can go up to negative 2.1 billion and positive 2.1 billion and that's essentially the that's essentially the thing so when you're programming these things you're going to have to decide whether to use signed or unsigned plot twist unsigned is a lot faster on processors if you don't intend on going negative so you can do various things with these we can add them we can subtract them Oops. quite ironic that I typed that by accident we can multiply them and we can finally divide them and there's also another one as well which I'll talk about as well and then the odd one out that you might not use I don't use it much but you may use it is called the modulus now if I recall I think 
modulus has something to do with the 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 assignment becoming the integer remainder of the division. So let's see in the case of one, two, three, so we'll have one, two, three again. I think that would be about one, I think. I I'm not very good at remainders, it's been a while since I've done remainders because I haven't needed them. So it's useful for all sorts of stuff, so mind you you can do this with all of them, even the character. So but what it essentially does is it changes the value of the ASCII and it obviously moves it up the set as I mentioned so now you may be thinking hey I've done all of this stuff but what's the point in making these numbers if I can't display them or present them to the user somehow and now don't worry about that our printf has something quite cool with it Just going to type these, and now I'm going to explain them. Things love them. Someone will no doubt let me know in the comments. So, what our printf function here does is it displays the numbers here. So what you have to do to do that is you have to put this here now what this does this percentage d is it makes it display a whole number and you can in theory you can put in a double and it will just round it up as far as i know i don't i mean you can try it i'm not sure whether it will work though so what these essentially do is these allow our printer function to print the numbers and also the characters as well so yeah, that's what this does. And you you don't have to do it like this. You can just go you can add you can add regular text to it as well so like So my number is 123. And that is like pi is By the way, it isn't, mainly because I don't have a favourite character. Don't even ask about books. So, you can put basically anything you want in here, as long as this token is here. So it knows where to output the, the variable, so, yeah. So, control O again, control X, and then we're going to do our GCC thing again. And we're going to compile it and call it. Boom, compiled. If you want to see how this process works, I think I, ex I explain it in the first tutorial. So now we're going to run it along with everything else, how we do it in Linux and how we do it on Sigwin. So as you can see here, it has outputted a number because obviously we did all the division, subtraction, all that good stuff earlier, and it's come out with zero. And that's probably because I did the integer remainder on it because the division by 3 must of course it did because 123 divided by 3 obviously has no remainder because that is the 41st digit in the 3 in 3 you know the free sequence and obviously since we did that since that thing there just does a float it'll only display it up to 59 and obviously it displays our character right so i hope you enjoy enjoying this tutorial add this explained variables in case you weren't paying attention okay so if you weren't paying attention watch the thing again alright if not you're fine go and look around I suggest you pick up some PDFs and read them while you're watching this tutorial because that always helps your learning you can never learn from one source I think school taught me that so thanks for watching and see you around <laughs>